Hello, I'm Dr. Erin Elmore. I'm a licensed psychologist and I work with Triad as an educational consultant and test prep coach. Essentially, I help guide people through the process of preparing for and passing their licensing exams. In this video, I will address helpful exam strategies for the ECCPP part one. Let's get right into it. One of the most common challenges that test takers face when taking an exam is second guessing. It's the whole, I had the correct answer and then I changed it at the last minute. The best way to manage this is to recognize that more often than not, your first answer, if it's thought out, is the correct one. So don't change your answers too often. I know that's easier said than done, so you can guide yourself through a series of questions to determine whether or not you should change your answer. Ask yourself, one, is there any new information I found that I didn't account for? Two, did I misread the question or the answer options? Three, did I have an aha moment later on in the exam or notice a mistake? Four, did I accidentally choose the wrong answer just by being a little bit careless? If you answered no to all of these questions, leave your answer as is. If you answered yes to any of them, review the question again, formulate your answer based on the new information, and then double check the answer choices. And always remember, if you have to convince yourself that an answer choice is correct, it's probably a really good distractor and is likely incorrect. Another common challenge is keeping your head in the game when you feel like things are going really poorly. During the exam, you will most likely come across questions that will make you feel like you studied for the wrong test and you doubt everything that you've learned up to this point. It's important to remind yourself that this is actually pretty normal and how you think you're doing on the exam is not a good indicator for how you're actually performing. One of the biggest challenges test takers face while preparing for the ECCPP is the sheer volume of the amount of material covered and uncertainty around what specific content could be addressed on the exam. This can lead to anxiety about whether you've studied enough of the right things and of course fear of failure. The ECCPP is a high stakes exam and doctoral students really aren't accustomed to failing, so these factors combined create a perfect storm of test anxiety. If you've visited any number of ECCPP forums or professional communities, you'll notice that many exam candidates experience similar challenges. How do I tackle all this material? What's the best way to study? I'm not scoring in the recommended range on my practice tests. Can I still pass the ECCPP? Am I ready? Should I reschedule? And while there are many strategies and recommendations that exam candidates post in these forums, it's important to reflect on what will work for you and your specific circumstances. Studying for the ECCPP is not a one-size-fits-all approach, so you'll want to identify your specific needs and strengths. The ECCPP is complicated, but you know a lot of information, so don't let your emotions get the best of you. Take a deep breath and remind yourself that you have a solid foundation of knowledge in place, so even if you don't automatically know the topic in question, you know enough to break it down and give yourself a 50-50 chance. And remember, 50 of these questions aren't scored. So take comfort in knowing that you did your best for this question and then reset for the next question. One of the best ways to determine your study and test taking needs is to A, think about your history with standardized tests and study strategies that have been helpful in the past, and B, take a practice or assessment exam to determine your needs moving forward. Even though the ECCPP requires quite a bit of content mastery, it's not the only thing you need to successfully pass the exam. The ECCPP is complicated, but not impossible, so you'll want to work on your approach to the exam as well as studying. Studying for the ECCPP, much like writing a dissertation, is best accomplished one step at a time. Regardless of what study materials you use, you will need a study plan that captures the long-term goals and the day-to-day -day tasks. A good study plan also allows for distributed practice, meaning you're reviewing in small chunks spread throughout the week rather than all at once. By taking the guesswork out of what to study each day, you're more likely to stay on track. 
You'll also need to make sure your study plan is flexible. Your study needs and goals will likely change throughout this process, so it's important to continually assess your needs and incorporate that into your study plan. The sooner you identify your needs, the earlier you'll be able to develop the skills to address them. To do this, you'll want to take tests early and often. That may seem counterintuitive, but it actually helps catch your needs before they become a bigger issue. In general, it's important to maintain your perspective about the practice exam process. The goal is not to pass your first practice exam or even your second or third. In fact, it takes multiple exams before you're typically scoring in a passing range. The goal of taking the practice exams is to learn about your test taking needs and guide your studying. Consider it data gathering so that you can have strategic decisions in the future about how to best spend your time. So how do you know what you need to focus on? After taking any assessment or practice exam, you can review the questions and look for three key things. One, did I get this wrong because I didn't know the content? If so, that's a sign you'll want to study more in that area and work on strategies for learning and encoding that material. Two, did I actually know the answer, but something else got in the way, like changing my answer, missing a key word that changed the whole meaning of this question, not reading all the options thoroughly, etc. If this is the case, you'll want to specifically work on your test taking skills. Three, are you noticing any anxiety or fatigue playing a role in your attention span or patience with the exam? Start paying attention to the types of questions you get the most worked up about and when you get fatigued so that you can develop a proactive plan to address those needs along the way. Having a strategy in place for tackling multiple choice questions can help with this. And of course, the more often you use these strategies with practice exams, the more likely it will be automatic for you on test day. When reviewing multiple choice questions, first identify the question. This is particularly helpful with long questions. Once you determine what's actually being asked, then review the supporting relevant information. Identify what domain the question is asking about and recall what you can about the topic in a question. Then formulate your own answer before looking at the answer options. Once you've identified a potential answer, read each answer option. It's important to read through all of the answers, even if you think you found the correct one already. If you're not sure, narrow it down to 50-50, pick one, then flag the question and just move on to the next question. Don't skip questions because if you run out of time without answering all of the questions, then you're automatically forfeiting points. If you at least answer it, you're giving yourself a chance to earn a point. You'll also want to avoid dwelling too long on a question so that you don't run out of time. Try to stick to a pace of approximately one minute per question or about 55 questions per hour. You've made it through all the material, you're scoring in a passing range on the practice exams and your exam day is near. So what do you do now? Take a break. Yes, you heard that correctly. It's best to take a break from studying at least the day before your exam. Use this time for self-care, have a good meal, and reset yourself so that you're physically and mentally re-energized for the exam. This is also a really good time to gather items you might need for the testing center, familiarize yourself with the testing center location, pick out your clothing, fill your gas tank, or set aside any snacks you want to take with you. The more you can do so that you're on autopilot on exam day, the better. We want you to use all of your cognitive resources for successfully taking the exam rather than just trying to get out the door. Once you take the exam and it's completed, do something enjoyable or relaxing. You've worked so hard and no matter the outcome of the exam, you should do something to refill your cup. Whether it's a nice meal, time with friends, a big trip, or curling up with a book that you've been putting off, make sure you make time for you before moving on to the next thing. Your hard work really deserves to be celebrated. Thank you for watching this study series video on exam strategies for the ECPP part one. On behalf of everyone at AATBS, I really wish you all the best in your exam prep process, and certainly I wish you success on test day. You've got this.